بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In this video, we will discuss with you the importance of leaving off those things that are major causes of marital discord. Now, obviously, before we get into the dangers of participating in these actions and taking on these characteristics, we need to discuss what some of these activities and characteristics are to begin with. The first one that we want to discuss with you is disobeying Allah or in Arabic, Ma'asiyatillah. This is something that is known to be one of the things that directly affects the family unit itself. So don't only be aware of it, but rather beware of it. I want to not only bring to your attention, but rather to show you the importance of our not only talking about the statements of the Salaf of this Ummah or the pious predecessors of the Muslims. Rather, we need to find in the pieces of wisdom that they left us, that which we can act upon. For example, look at the reference that Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah made about the statement of one of our salaf when he said, إِنِّي لَعَأْسِ اللَّهِ فَأَرَى ذَلِكْ فِي خُلِقِ الدَّابَةِ وَأَمْرَأَةِ When he said that one of the salaf mentioned that if I disobey Allah, I see that in the attitude of my rotting beast as well as my wife. Subhanallah. Think about this statement for a second. Think about all of the benefit that is in this statement. There are probably are not many of you that this is their first time hearing this statement. But how many of you have actually sat down and thought about what lies behind the surface of this statement? In it, we see a direct relation between the disobedience that is done by the individual and that which comes from their spouse. We are focusing on this part alone because this is the part that is relevant to the topic at hand. There are also other numerous statements from the Salaf of this Ummah about how when some of them would fall into calamity or problems in their lives, they would return back to looking at their sins and seeking forgiveness for them. And that which I want us to consider and understand here is the fact that from amongst their calamities and problems are some of the situations that arise between the husband and the wife. So what we want to point out, so as not to take the whole of your day, because we have quite a few things that we want to cover in today's video. Is that one of the first things that you should try to do, umuman, or generally, is to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your sins. And you should try to stay away from further committing any other sins. Now, as we said a minute ago, this is in general. Now, how much more when we're going through this process of either one, trying to protect that good relationship which we have already, or two, trying to fix a relationship which may have hit some sharp turns. Either way, this is a great place to begin. Now. All of the rest of the things which we will mention are also forms of disobedience. But the difference is that these are things that happen which affect the relationship which include the wife and the husband and the relationship directly. The first of these things are lying to your spouse. But it doesn't stop there. Rather, lying in general. Okay, fine. So now you can say, I don't lie to my wife or my husband. But, think about it. How much 
Could she or he possibly trust you if they know that you are constantly lying to everyone else? Do you really think that they believe that he or she is so special that he or she is the only one that you're not lying to? Come on, you can't possibly be that gullible. Now, can you say that you could possibly know your spouse to be a liar, just as an example, and you could really see yourself thinking that that whole situation goes for everyone else because you always get the truth? If you're being honest with yourself, you can't possibly say that this is an imaginable situation. Well, then how can you expect it from your spouse? I know you're probably sitting there thinking, these things are obvious. I didn't need anyone to point this out to me. But look at your own situation. Can you see now why your spouse may be somewhat reluctant to accept that which you have to say? If this is something that your spouse sees from you, don't you think it's something that you should change and fast? Now, so far, all I have discussed with you is about letting your spouse not hear you lying all of the time to other people. How much more serious is it if we find that our spouses expect a lie to come out of our mouths whenever we speak to them? SubhanAllah. I don't want to go too far on how this causes discord in the husband's and wife's relationship. I don't want to sit here and beat this topic into your heads. So with all of that being said, we will move on to the next point. Next, we want to talk with all of you about infidelity. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from even coming close to this. As we know, the legislated punishment for it is serious. But we're not trying to talk to you today about the punishment that can come in this life for fornication or adultery, nor the punishment of the hereafter. Rather, we're here today to discuss with you the effects of cheating on your spouse plays in dissolving that loving bond between the husband and the wife. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us from ever falling into this heinous crime. Allahumma ameen. Also, may he protect us from ever finding our spouses in this horrible situation. Allahumma ameen. I want you to do something for me. Close your eyes for a second. Now, regardless of how you feel about your spouse at this very moment, I want you to imagine seeing them with someone else it was unlawful for them to be with. Okay, now that's enough. Open your eyes. Now, do you see how angry you got emotionally just now? Do you feel all that pain that that thought alone caused and the sickness you felt in your stomach? Even though we know that it was just an exercise, we can't help but to feel that way. So how can you justify being willing to put your partner through this? You can't. There is no way that you can justify this. Now, I sure hope that none of you are involved in this horrific action. But unfortunately, you find that some of the people play on the insecurities and the jealousy that their spouse has for them. They do things that cause them to feel as though there might be someone else. They do this because their spouse's going berserk gives them an ego burst. SubhanAllah. Why do something like this to someone that loves you? You see how you just felt yourself when we did the exercise a minute ago, and you know nothing was going on. Now imagine for a second how your partner must feel when they think something really is or may be happening. And you do this on purpose? SubhanAllah. 
How much do you think a person can or will take of this before their feelings for you change? But as we said before, we hope that this is not what you're involved in. We like to think that as Muslims, we try a little bit harder to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment. Therefore, stay away from fornication and adultery. But just as it is important for you to stay away from doing these heinous crimes because you're concerned about preserving your good relationship or your good standing with your Lord, you need to be just as determined to stay away from creating this doubt in your spouses, whether it be done purposely or accidentally. If you want to preserve upon that good relationship and good standing that you have with your spouse. Next. We want to discuss with you the topic of not spending quality time with your spouse. Do you remember back when you were trying to win the heart of your spouse? Well, I hope you really don't believe that once you won their hearts, that this means that you will always have them. If you thought that, then you are greatly mistaken. Once you have won a person's heart, you must continue on trying to keep it. You must keep up with giving those gifts, those sweet compliments, dinner dates, etc. Whether you are a man or a woman, you want to be shown sometimes or made to feel like you are the only thing that matters. Don't you think that your spouse wants this as well? We need to look at how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was with his wives. He didn't ignore them, as many of us do these days with our spouses. Rather, he showed them that they were important to him. Let's look at some examples. Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, reported a statement of Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha, when she said, I would drink and hand the vessel to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he would put his mouth where my mouth was. I would eat meat from the bone and he would put his mouth where mine had been. And again this was brought to us by Imam Bukhari Rahimahullah. He also reported that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to take Aisha out walking at night and they used to walk and talk together. Out of respect for his wives, the Prophet ﷺ would give his wives' friends gifts. We find that Imam Muslim rahimahullah, reported that once when the Prophet ﷺ slaughtered a sheep, he said, send it to Khadijah's friends. The examples are so many. We could sit here for days talking about the love, respect, an honor that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam showed to his wives. He used to spend time with them, compliment them, giving them gifts, declaring his love for them, consoling them when they cried, etc. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the perfect example of what a perfect spouse was. His is the example that we all need to be trying to follow. Now sisters, don't get too happy and start pointing the fingers at your husband. His wives were the same way with him, alayhi salatu wasalam. So before you blame your husband for the current situation as though it was all his fault, you should look at when was the last time you were like this with him. A little side note, one thing that I want to point out for those who haven't yet come to realize that pointing fingers and blaming your spouse as though everything was their fault will never better your situation. Until you begin to take some of the blame and try to best fix your own problems, you will continue on with your destructive behaviors worrying about your spouse's bad ways and vice versa, and nothing will ever get any better. Take a step back and look for a second. 
Many times we find that if we want to make an overall change in our relationships, we need to make an overall change in ourselves. Just remember something. That the more that you avoid spending time with your spouse, the more and more likely they are to start distancing themselves from you emotionally. Now, the last thing that we want to speak with you about today in terms of those things which we need to stay away from is breaking promises. Before we get into the meat of the topic, I want you to know what some of the scholars of Islam have had to say about the issue of breaking promises. Imam al-Dhahabi, rahimahullah, he said that the 45th major sin is treachery and the breaking of covenants. Ibn Hajj al-Laskalani, rahimahullah, he said that many of the scholars considered breaking an agreement to be one of the major sins. And Ibn Atiyah, rahimahullah, said that it's impermissible to violate any permissible contract or pact between the Muslims. Now all of this is being said just to bring to light the way that the Salaf of this Ummah used to feel about breaking pacts or oaths or promises. Now these were just a few of the statements of a couple of the scholars of Islam. Now, let's look at breaking promises and its dangers within the confines of your home. Have you ever known anyone in your life that you couldn't depend on for anything? I mean, anything. This was that person that called themselves your friend. But every single time that you counted on them to come through, they let you down. You probably don't have to think long or hard to figure out who this person was. Because everyone knows someone like that. How did you feel about that person? How did everyone else feel about that person? Yes, some people probably liked them. But everyone knew that they couldn't trust them as far as they could throw them. Now, this is someone that we meet up with from time to time. And sometimes we go without seeing them for long periods of time. But our feelings were always the same when we met up with them. Now, imagine this being your life partner, your second half, your child's other parent, and the one that is supposed to be your rock, the one that is supposed to have your back. SubhanAllah. I know I couldn't imagine having someone like that by my side. I'm sure that you can't either. If you had someone like that, you would be walking around mad, frustrated, and simply fed up with not being able to depend on the promise to be fulfilled by the one who vowed to be your other half. Now that we have drawn this vivid picture of you having to deal with someone else being like this to you, and how you would hate being with and around someone like this, I'm sure now you can see the importance of not being this individual for others, especially your spouse. Now in conclusion, as we stated in the beginning of this video, that we will be discussing both activities and characteristics that we need to remove from ourselves as individuals so that we can remove them from our households. We have not only mentioned these actions and characteristics, but we have also talked about their dangers to us religiously as well as them being a danger to our relationships, especially the husband and wife relationship. Hopefully, after it's all said and done, that you realize that if you really want to develop or for some keep that healthy relationship, you need to leave off these things and leave them behind totally. And if they were from your characteristics, you need to start over from the beginning. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us 
the tawfiq or the success that we can rid ourselves and our households of these things and we ask him to bless us with the patience and resolve needed to give the time necessary for any harm that has been developed to be fixed. Ameen, ameen, Allahumma ameen, subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik, wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk, wa akhirat da'wana, an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.